let's move our attention swiftly to the new kid on the block, the top talent pass, which by all accounts has been 160,000 applications and there's been 100,000 approvals, although we haven't yet seen um, in any sort of concrete sense 100,000 approvees having hit the streets in Hong Kong contributing to our economy as of yet. But that notwithstanding, we do have this program. It's a piece of cake to qualify for, frankly, if you are able to qualify. So I'll talk you through the program details now. So basically, the Top Talent Pass scheme seeks to attract top talents with rich work experience, good academic qualifications globally to explore Explore opportunities in Hong Kong, starting a business or working for yourself or contributing your talent in some tangible sort of, you know, economically validatable um, way. The essential overview is that you can do it by way of getting, uh, of being a high earner, which means that you have to show that your annual income has been a minimum of two and a half million Hong Kong dollars immediately prior to submitting the uh, application. That's the 12 months immediately prior to submitting the application. That's category A. Category B is... Um, here we go. It's category B is where you have graduated from one of the world's top 100 universities with at least three years of work experience in the last five years. Now, under the enhancement measures announced um, by John Lee on October 25th, there's going to be an additional 84 universities that are going to be added to the top 100. So it's going to actually be 184 universities. At the moment, it's only bachelor degrees that qualify. So if you've had a, a postgraduate degree from one of the top 100 stroke 184 universities, it don't count, unfortunately. But anyway, let's see, the announcement measures actually um, allows postgraduate degrees to qualify as well, because I've seen plenty of instances, frankly, in the last few months where they didn't get a, a degree from a bachelor degree from one of the qualifying universities, but they've had a PhD or you know a master's degree in actual fact, but don't get a look in. There's some logic behind that. Don't quite understand what it's all about. Um, but anyway, that's how it's been. So let's see what the um, new policy has to say once we get visibility on how it's going to play out. So, so category A is about how much you've earned. Category B is top 100 university with three years out of five prior working experience. Category C, which is in here somewhere, yeah. Um, category C is where you, you're you basically a, a relatively fresh graduate. You still have to graduate from the world leading 100 universities as listed by the immigration department. But if you haven't got the requisite working experience, you can still qualify. Um, but there's a quota of 10,000 a year that applies. So um, you might not get a look in because quota has already been taken. So B and C are effectively the same. B doesn't have a quota. C's got a quota of 10,000, assuming that you haven't got three out of five years working experience. And if you are a category B or a category C, or indeed a category A applicant for that matter, there's no requirement to have an employment offer. So you get it on the strength of the money that you've earned or where you graduated from and how much work experience that you've got. Uh, and then at this stage in time, all talents are welcome. There are only six restricted nationalities. These are Cuba, North Korea, all the usual sorts of suspects.